The difficulties one would encounter while trying to land a man on the moon and return safely to Earth are truly astounding. The moon has a harsh environment, with the surface temperature ranging from minus 170 degrees Fahrenheit in the shadows to 250 degrees Fahrenheit in the sunlight. It is also a vacuum. To think that men made it there and back a third of a century ago is quite a stretch. This should be apparent when one looks at how the space shuttle has fared going only one six hundredth the distance that Apollo claims to have gone. After three men died in the capsule during the simulation in 1967, it was just two years later that men were walking around on the moon. This is less time than it took to launch the space shuttle again after its burn-up on re-entry in 2003. To win the X Prize, a private company had to fly a light craft to an altitude of 62 miles. This is just under the distance that the ascent module had to fly to reach the command module from the surface of the moon. Yet the winner of the X Prize on Earth had to have their vehicle hauled up by another vehicle and then fire its engines to get to the 62 mile mark. This should give you an idea of how difficult it is to just go 62 miles high, even with today's technology. Then, add to the fact that the ascent module, with its very low mass fraction, would have had to accelerate to over Mach 6 to dock with the command module, and the fictional nature of the event becomes self-evident. It is just outright unscientific and pathological to accept the moon landing claim given the total lack of confirmation and inability to duplicate anything that even slightly approaches the alleged events of 1969. Of course, by far the greatest mystery in all this is why the scientific community continues to fall for all this and accept it unquestioningly. Is science just another religion that has its sacred cows? If you want to stay in the club, must you defend the beloved cow no matter how badly it stinks? Since nearly all of academia is dependent on funding from the federal government, any scientist brave enough to speak the truth would be committing career suicide. Scientists realize this and therefore will not let their minds examine this objectively for even a moment. They all just prefer to run with the herd. As victims of cognitive dissonance, so-called scientists argue in support of the moon landings out of reflex. If one examines a timeline of aviation and space travel milestones, this contradiction of logic becomes apparent. Consider Kitty Hawk in 1903. Lindbergh crossing the Atlantic in 1927, Sputnik in 1957, through the space shuttle in the latter part of the 20th century. These were all within 400 miles of Earth, yet the alleged moon landings of the late 60s purportedly took astronauts 240,000 miles away from the Earth. The Apollo missions, therefore, stick out as a fantastic statistical anomaly, and without any other similar events to confirm or duplicate the hypothesized event, one third of a century since, the scientific method requires that they be discarded. This being the case, no one that believes the moon landing claims should be allowed to call themselves a scientist. The Cold War provided the perfect motivation for the deception. Under the specter of a nuclear threat from the Soviets, and in the shadow of the Bay of Pigs invasion, it is easy to imagine those involved believing that it was their patriotic duty to help bluff the Soviets into thinking we had military superiority. It apparently worked. A nuclear war was never fought, so we are certainly in no position to second-guess the military strategy that the government employed. With the space race officially ending with this achievement, Nixon was quick to seize the spotlight by becoming the first U.S. president to visit Moscow. Cooperation for joint space missions quickly became the topic of discussion between the leaders, ushering in detente and easing of tensions between the two superpowers. Uh, as you're probably well aware, we are still working on other programs, Skylab being the prime effort starting in the spring of, the, of uh, next year. Uh, we're also working on the uh, cooperative mission with the Russians, which will take place in 1975. And, of course, we've got quite a few of uh, the flight control team as well as other center elements involved in the work on the shuttle. So it's, it's the start of a new era, I hope. 
It is easy to see why the government would want to perpetuate such a myth, even after the military objectives were achieved. The alleged accomplishment is a source of national pride, and no one wants to be the one to remove this source of pride. It would also not come as a surprise to find out that in upper levels of certain agencies, the moon landing hoax is actually somewhat of an inside joke, and that within these institutions, those that have attained a certain level are entrusted with this secret information. Considering the difficulties attendant in such a trip, one thing is for sure. When the first person actually arrives on the moon someday, they will have bought themselves a one-way ticket. An exploratory voyage of this magnitude does not lend itself so easily to a return. Hey, how are we going to get to the moon if we can't talk between three buildings?